Hello, I'm Bob Metcalf, inventor of Ethernet, and now 39 years later, I'm professor of innovation at the University of Texas. It's going to be my great pleasure today to introduce a new generation of Ethernet, Carrier Ethernet 2.0. And yes, this is not the first time a new Ethernet has been introduced. Since its inception in 1973, there have been many new Ethernets. From its humble 2.94 megabit per second beginnings in our lab in Palo Alto, Ethernet has constantly reinvented itself. According to IDC, last year, 2011, over 1.2 billion new Ethernet ports were shipped, 400 million wired and 800 million Wi-Fi. And even after an increase in five orders of magnitude of speed, build it and they will come still holds true. It's been more than a decade since Ethernet ventured out into the wide area network, and seven years since we defined the first carrier class networks and services that we all now know as carrier Ethernet. For the first time, Ethernet services were standardized, triggering adoption in more than 100 countries, 40 billion in revenue, and tens of millions of Ethernet service locations. More than a thousand products and services bear the MEF certified logo from 150 companies around the world. MEF has grown to close to 200 members with aggregate MEF member market capitalization well exceeding $1.5 trillion. This standardization fueled a transformation with carrier Ethernet obsoleting Sonnet TDM and becoming the service of choice that we enjoy today. Just as the web browser revolutionized the efficiency and usability of the internet, a new ethernet will revolutionize the efficiency and usability of ethernet service delivery. So it is with great pleasure that I introduce to you a new generation of ethernet, Carrier Ethernet 2.0. So what is CE 2.0? Why is it different? How will it benefit the millions who use Carrier Ethernet now and the coming millions of new users? I cannot think of a better individual to answer these questions than Nan Chen, founder and president of MEF. Nan has been at the forefront of creating and driving Carrier Ethernet for the last 10 years. Nan? Thanks, Bob. It's been well over a year in preparation and hard work leading to today. We at MEF are so excited about CE 2.0 which is a generationally more advanced and in a position to really change the industry again. Our first generation of carrier Ethernet enabled standardized Ethernet services to be delivered over a single provider's network. This second generation, C2.0, can be best defined by its ability to deliver differentiated applications over interconnected, managed networks globally. In other words, C1.0 is about standardization of Ethernet services. C2.0, that were compatible to 1.0, is characterized by three powerful standardized features, multiple class of service, also known as multi-cause, interconnect, and manageability over eight services, which is more than twice as many supported in 1.0. The approval of key MEF specifications and implementation agreement in January 2012 really marks the tipping point that this new generation of services and networks can now be confidently deployed as a new industry standards and provide a new dimensions for continued industry growth and prosperity. So what is it 2.0? C2.0 is characterized by a number of supported services and features. C2.0 greatly expands from three Ethernet services in the first generation to eight Ethernet services, two of each in E-Line, E-LAN, E-Tree, and E-Access, as defined in MEF service specification and implementation agreement. Furthermore, C2.0 supports newly standardized and powerful service features, multi-cost, interconnect, and manageability, all of which are delivered through tightly integrated and inherently connected service attributes, implementation agreement, and management specifications. Let me explain a bit further. Newly defined multi-cost extensions now, for the first time, standardized performance objectives 
across a variety of geographic performance tiers and applications. This results in improved quality of service and optimized efficiency on a global scale. The interconnect specifications expand the influence and reach of Care Ethernet worldwide, and new management specifications provide affordable scalability and measurability not previously possible. The mobile backhaul implementation agreement creates a standard for efficient and reliable 4G mobile backhaul networking services, furthermore delivering significant backhaul savings for mobile operators and revenue opportunities for access providers through multi-cost enabled interconnects. As you can see, C2.0 is generationally advanced networks and services characterized by three powerful and standardized features, multi-cost, interconnect, and manageability over eight Ethernet services. So how does this translate in values to the market? To find out who better to answer than my partner, Mike Volgende, chairman of the MEF board and director of Advanced Networking Product Transformation at Verizon. Mike? Thanks, Nan. Carry Ethernet 2.0 is not just defined by the technical work and specifications, but by the incremental value it brings to an expanded Carry Ethernet community. For example, support of multiple classes of service itself is not new. Rather, it's standardization with performance objectives for each service class defined, which is new. So now you know what performance you can expect for each class supported. This means you can have consistent performance levels and associated SLAs no matter who you interconnect with. For the enterprise, it means there should not be surprises or differences in the performance aspect of the SLA regardless of the office location. For the retail service provider, it's the guarantee of certain performance criteria, whether on or off net. For the wholesale provider, it's the standard definition of the minimum performance that must be delivered from the access network. Efficient service delivery translates directly to cost savings and quality delivery of high performance applications. For example, secure SLA enforced delivery of cloud services alongside corporate applications are all furthered by Carry Ethernet 2.0. Carry Ethernet 2.0's interconnection standards advance efficiencies for global interconnectivity. This is essential for enterprises to expand rapidly based upon business needs, never to be limited by geography. To small and medium businesses, Carry Ethernet 2.0's standardized multi-class of service further enables internet and hosted services to be accessed via a single Carry Ethernet connection, yet with higher SLAs for those hosted services. This enables enterprise quality networking for small and medium businesses for those applications that require high performance and secure delivery. Carry Ethernet 2.0 standards are not limited to business service users. It will also positively impact mobile operators. The migration of mobile backhaul to carrier Ethernet and 4G build-out are well documented and of massive scale. Carry Ethernet 2.0 standards lay the foundation for additional efficiencies and cost savings for mobile operators through implementation of mobile backhaul specific performance objectives, packet and network based synchronization, resiliency performance, and service OEM fault management. Turning to service providers and equipment manufacturers implementing Carry Ethernet 2.0 standards, the ability to reach vast numbers of locations locally, regionally, and globally is made more efficient with the introduction of standardized wholesale e-access and standardized engineering over distance from multiple classes of service. E-access standardization will further the buying and selling of wholesale services, enabling additional providers to more easily join the carry Ethernet community. This, of course, all good news for manufacturers. Carry Ethernet equipment sales continue to rise. Carry Ethernet 2.0 opens up additional new markets and possibilities to continue that growth trend. In summary, Carry Ethernet 2.0 standards address many key requirements. First, multi-class of service standards enable increased efficiency of Carry Ethernet support of both wire and wireless network providers. Second, 
interconnect standards allows for more efficient expansion of Ethernet service footprints. And third, manageability standards enable more consistent performance throughput to better accommodate SLAs to customers. Carry Ethernet 2.0 represents a significant milestone in the industry partnering to enable delivery of next generation Ethernet standards to the global marketplace. CE 2.0 is not just a standard on paper. In fact, CE 2.0 implementation is already well underway by MEF members. The details of CE 2.0 are available now on MEF website. Over the next several quarters, the MEF while providing in-depth seminars, workshops, conference appearances, and guidance on how to implement C2.0. And yes, once again, MEF certification will play a vital role of speeding installation, creating interoperable baseline, and establish elevated recognition for those who bring C2.0 benefits to the market. And yes, C2.0 certification will be available soon. Carry Ethernet Generation's outline a framework and roadmap for our continued effort and development at the MEF and for the entire industry. Future CE Generation networks and services will be geared towards ever more simple and automated service delivery. But that is a story for another day. For now and the foreseeable future, CE 2.0 the generationally advanced network and services with multi-cause, interconnect, and manageability over eight services is in a position to deliver unmatched values to all stakeholders and in a position to change the industry again. Perhaps most remarkable is that almost 40 years later, the growth of Ethernet is so strong and innovation is still hard at work. You know, every time we look at a reinvention of Ethernet, we're always left with the same conclusion. This is just the beginning. We would encourage everyone to join us here at MAF in changing the world again with a new generation of Ethernet, Carrier Ethernet 2.0. Until we meet again. Hey, I'd like to thank uh, Nan and Mike and Bob. Um, and here, this is Manik Dubash in front of a live net events audience of press and analysts. And we have a set of questions that those press and analysts have already supplied. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead with the first question, which is to you, Bob. And it's from Anthony Savas from Computer Weekly UK. Why is Carry Ethernet 2.0 such an important milestone in the history of Ethernet? And what impact do you think that this will have on the industry? And there's a rider to this. Also, last time I met you, Bob, was at Net Events in Spain when you focused on Zigbee. Whatever happened to Zigbee? So, Anthony, you, you remember you remembered the last time? Uh, well, you know, Ethernet is proliferating uh, wildly, uh, certainly beyond any of my dreams, and in, in many directions. And it's very important uh, that the uh, so-called telechasm be bridged. And that's what uh, Carrier Ethernet is doing, is going across the abundant bandwidth in the LAN to the abundant bandwidth in the WAN and connecting it with native packet-oriented services. And with 2.0, as you've just heard a few times, we're now expanding the quality of service well beyond uh, uh, best efforts, my favorite. And we've also uh, allowed carriers now to interconnect to provide worldwide service. Those are, those are very big steps. As for Zigbee, Zigbee is alive and well. Uh, it's, I view it as a descendant of Ethernet, by the way, providing uh, 802.15.4 embedded networking. And uh, I would estimate uh, 10 million uh, Zigbee nodes shipped uh, two years ago, uh, last, the year before last, and uh, another 10 million this year. And we're watching the growth of Zigbee out of the energy management space into uh, uh, security monitoring and um, automation in the home, and eventually Zigbee will get into lighting and uh, distributed energy management uh, for networking there. Is that the uh, is that a good enough answer, Anthony? He says yes, so that's good. Thanks a lot, Bob. Question two aimed at Mike Volgende, um, and this this one is from France, from Thierry Utrebon, uh from Windows News and Internet Pratique. 
And the question is, how are enterprise businesses going to benefit from the introduction of Carrier Ethernet 2.0? Over to you, Mike. The extension of standards, it was a significant milestone with Carrier Ethernet 1.0 and kind of laying the framework for standardized services um, to be launched, kind of the, um, you know, 101, kind of the, the basic service definition. And what Carrier Ethernet 2.0 is takes it to another level, um, you know, with multi-classes of service, interconnection standards and manageability standards. Now that's going to enable enterprises to realize more consistent performance levels and associated SLAs, regardless of the office location. Uh, a lot of the ways that the carriers have been uh, managing that um, today with interconnections is kind of on a bilateral uh, uh, negotiation on a carrier by carrier basis uh, to enable national and global networks and the advent of these standards across manageability, multi-class of service, and interconnection will further enable those interconnections to achieve to be achieved on a more cost-efficient basis. And ultimately, those uh, benefits will be uh, passed on to enterprise customers. For a small and medium business, if I can extend to, to that important customer segment as well, um, the, uh, the advent of Carry Ethernet 2.0 standards will further the availability of, of capabilities such as internet and hosted services. You know, those again have been available um, on a non-standard um, basis by carriers, but the advent of standards will further their availability, consistent implementation and associated SLAs um, to be provided for those services with SLAs supporting, you know, the higher performance requirements for hosted applications um, that are associated with those multi-service interconnection arrangements. Thanks a lot, Mike. Um, stay tuned. I have another question for you, but before I ask, ask that one, we have a question come through from our online audience. Guy Matthews of Capacity Magazine in the UK asks, does, and, I don't, and I think this, this could be for Nan, uh, does conformity to carry Ethernet 2.0 place a cost burden of any sort on carriers and service providers and if so, what are their returns on this? Uh, thanks for the question, Guy. Actually, on the contrary, the 2.0 is really making uh, better utilize the existing equipment and in terms of uh, delivering the services. Uh, one of the key things is 2.0 uh, able to enable is the multiple class of services, uh, which standardize across multiple carriers. And what results into is the multi multitude of uh, ability to deliver a large amount of data uh, via the same infrastructure and deliver the better uh, deliver a better user experience. So 2.0, in fact, enable uh, leverage the existing infrastructure and to be able to deliver better uh, user experience. And I think it's a win-win situation for, for, for all involved. Okay, thank you, Nan. Uh, Mike, hope you're still there. Um, we have uh, a question from Per Danielsen of C Telecommunication in Denmark. He asks, how will Carry Ethernet 2.0 open up new markets or applications for Carry Ethernet and improve business opportunities for equipment vendors and service providers? So for equipment vendors, I'll address that segment first. Um, you know, Ethernet has been a success story in the industry. Um, you know, the, the price per performance bandwidth of, of Ethernet, um, which were further enabled with the advent of, of uh, standardized services in Carry Ethernet 1.0. Um, there's been significant demand for services from customers. Service providers have been uh, working diligently to meet that demand, and equipment manufacturers have certainly benefited from that. Um, with the advent of standard interconnections, uh, standard interconnectivity management, um, as as, as well as multi-class of service, it's going to open up additional opportunities for equipment manufacturers because there'll be additional um, providers that will be able to participate um, in the interconnection. I'm sorry, the standard interconnection arrangements that are enabled through Ethernet 2.0 will enable more carriers to interconnect on a standard efficient basis. Um, that will create more demand for Ethernet and ultimately that demand will translate to uh, more business for equipment uh, vendors as well as for our service providers. Thank you, Mike. Um, question now for Bob. Uh, big picture question here, I guess. 
Uh, this one's from Stefan Kasmarek, Networld, Poland. The question is, how do you see Carrier Ethernet 2.0's role developing to improve cloud-based services and applications in the future? Well, the, the, the general benefits of 2.0 accrue not only to, I mean, mobile and Wi-Fi backhaul are probably the, uh, the two applications that I'm most worried about. But, of course, as Stefan has pointed out, cloud computing is currently the, uh, an emergent mode of computing. And, of course, that requires much higher bandwidth uh, and much higher reliability. So the, the class of service features of 2.0 are welcome uh, in the cloud computing environment so that the entire enterprises can afford to put their computation and data elsewhere up in the cloud, relying on the higher, uh, the, the higher quality of service and security provided by 2.0. Is that big enough picture? I don't know. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Um, another question for you, Bob. Stay no, hang, hang on the line there. Um, how, how green is the new generation Ethernet? This question is from Stefan Stanchev, Computer World Bulgaria. Green? Yeah. You mean, you mean like how does it save energy or how does it contribute to the um, – I assume that's what green means. That's it. You've got uh, it. Well, my motto is transport bits, not atoms and to the extent uh, – as a way of saving energy. And to the extent that uh, 2.0 encourages the uh, higher performance and lower cost transport of bits, that means we have more and more occasions where we can substitute bit transport for atom transport and thereby save energy. Uh, I guess uh, I guess another kind of answer is that there's a certain irony now that, that in the beginning of Ethernet, they – Many people insisted that we find a way to carry Ethernet on top of power lines, energy lines. And uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but now they're talking about carrying power on Ethernet lines. So I guess that makes Ethernet in its various forms as green as you get. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, we've got um, a question that's come in from online from Ted Sampson at InfoWorld. The question is, are there any documents available detailing what's being discussed in the presentation? I guess that's one for you, Nan. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, as soon as we uh, finish the live broadcast, uh, we'll have the uh, website live with all the documents and the, uh, everybody, everyone to consume. Okay, well, this next one's for you also, Nan. Uh, we have uh, Internet 2.0. Is Carry Ethernet 2.0 an enabler for business class Internet? 2.0. Interesting question, that. So if so, to what extent? Yeah, I assume, I assuming when they say Internet 2.0, they're not talking about Internet 2. I think they're talking about Web 2.0. Uh, that's kind of my assumption. Uh, if that's actually the case, then most of Web 2.0, the time and when that was uh, originally discussed, was delivered over Internet, which is a best effort service, uh, as we all know. You know, lack of the security features and lack of the, the quality service, which is desired by most the enterprise customers. And that's why uh, the cloud computing uh, spawned to the scene, simply because the fact that when you move uh, the network, compu the, the computing powers of the enterprise out of their wall uh, into the cloud, and that's where the, a lot of the web 2.0 services are actually ap applicable. And from that perspective, you know, Carrier Ethernet enabled the private cloud or, or secured web service delivery, really uh, with a great, greatly enhanced uh, quality service and security and reliability web services. And I think that's, uh, that's kind of the way the future where the cloud and, and uh, web services are married, uh, delivered through either public cloud or internet or private cloud through Carrier Ethernet 2.0. Thank you, Nan. Uh, stay close to the mic because the next one's for you as well. This one from Ralph Nardner, Funkschau in Germany. The MEF has always promoted a heavy focus on certification. What are the MEF's plans for Carry Ethernet 2.0 certification? Yeah, that's a good question, Ralph. Uh, uh, MEF certification program has done a, you know, more than just uh, verify the compliance. It has established the standards for deployed services, and C, when C2.0 uh, introduced, uh, once again, MEF certification will play a really vital role in speeding the deployment, creating a trusted baseline, and establish very much uh, elevated recognition for those who bring 2.0's 
benefit to the market, especially to the to the end customers. Yeah, yes, uh, CE 2.0 certification will soon be available to uh, MEF members, and announcement of availability expected to be Q2 uh, this year. Thanks, Dan. Um, we have a question. Sorry, another question. First, sorry, a question from Mike here that's coming from online. Uh, Rupa Honachari from Frost, Frost and Sullivan, I guess that must be, asks, how is Carry Ethernet 2.0 different from the MEF's 26 standards and specifications in place today? Well, essentially, um, it's a very good question. And uh, a big driver for us to put this generational framework in place was uh, to some degree to better message all of the great work that's been done by the, the MEF and by the membership at large, um, as opposed to launching 26 individual specifications. And each specification in and of itself is an important contribution and enhancement on the part of the industry at large, you know, to both endorse, adopt, and ultimately to implement those standards. Um, we think this this generational framework I think does a better job of of capturing all of the great work that's been done by the Metro Ethernet form. So um, I think it's a very good question in that it really sets up the benefit and the value, hopefully, of what we're bringing with the introduction of this generational framework, as opposed to launching 26 specifications. Those, that's all the great detail work behind the launch of Carry Ethernet 2.0. And the, and the enhancements that, you know, we're really focusing on around multi-class of service and interconnection um, uh, 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 enhancement and um, uh, capabilities that we're now bringing to the marketplace. That's great. Thank you. Uh, I, what looks like the final question here, um, future looking, and it's one for you, Bob, and it's from two people, actually. Ian Keane, Vice President of the Gartner Group, asks it. And John Williamson from Mobile.com also asks, um, well, Ian says, what was wrong with its carry Ethernet 1.0? But, you know, I think he was joking there. The real question is, what comes next? What do you expect to be the next major advance in the history of Ethernet? Well, the word Ethernet is uh, interesting in itself. Uh, here we're applying it to the uh, uh, Ethernet uh, carrier Ethernet. But Ethernet is... is um, more than that, it's become a, a, a global brand for standardized packet plumbing of the Internet. And it's, uh, you know, occurring, uh, it's, Ethernet is uh, continuing to make progress in the land. So we you know we're going from uh, 1 gig to 10 gig to 40 gig to 100 gig and maybe a terabit uh, in coming years in the land dimension. Uh, inside the WAN, we're watching uh, the proliferation of Ethernet-based equipment replacing the Sonnet TDM world. Uh, we're watching Wi-Fi uh, and the proliferation of uh, Ethernet on um, uh, wireless and mobile systems. We're watching the proliferation of Ethernet-like LAN systems down into the embedded world where we have billions of uh, currently unnetworked embedded microcontrollers. And then, of course, there's carrier Ethernet today, which is, as I mentioned earlier, spanning this uh, chasm between the WAN and the LAN, so that there are milestones in all of those areas that we're looking forward to. Like, for example, I'm looking forward to the general availability of 100 gig uh, Ethernet, both in the LAN and the WAN, and uh, that's that's just now beginning. Uh, in the, uh, uh, I'm also looking now for the proliferation of uh, embedded networks and the the creeping of embedded traffic onto the Internet, which I think will have a large impact in uh, many applications, say, in energy and healthcare and uh, education. Uh, so I, it's hard to say what the next big milestone will be. Maybe it's carrier Ethernet 3.0. I don't know. <laughs> um, but they're, they're all over the place. Uh, isn't it amazing that there's over a billion Ethernet port shipping every year? That's a milestone. I guess 10 billion will be the next milestone in terms of numbers. Um, anyway, I hope that was a satisfactory answer. Of course it was. Thank you, Bob. Um, I, I don't know if Nan wants to comment specifically on the Carry Ethernet 3.0 or 4.0 or whatever the next one's going to be from an MEF's perspective. You know, we really see a 2.0 that it's going to change in the world uh, in the sense of uh, being able to deliver 
efficient and usability of uh, the carrier Ethernet were already in place uh, in, in you know over 100 countries. And 3.0 obviously is uh, it's really about uh, ad additional advancement uh, on top of the 2.0, really focusing on simplified automated delivery of the services. Um, but that's the story for another day. Uh, we, we're certainly looking forward to hear everybody the feedback and and uh, work with the work with MEF and you know come together and and change the industry again. Nam, Bob, Mike, thank you very much. Okay, guys, stay tuned. Heck, I thought Ethernet was meant to be so simple. What's all these different services about? Okay, let's make it simple. The first carrier Ethernet delivered plenty, but it keeps on evolving. A whole new generation. That's the simplest way to put it. Generation 1 brought standardized, high bandwidth, low-cost metro services to end users over a single provider's network. For service providers, it meant new value-added services at lower cost. And so, new opportunities for equipment manufacturers. But things are moving forward. Important new capabilities are now being defined and you'll want your network services and certifications to be up to par. That's why we're launching Carrier Ethernet 2.0, enabling multiple classes of services over interconnected provider networks. Whole new markets, maybe hundreds of new providers serving millions of new end users. Plus, a new efficient backhaul model for the data-challenged wireless industry. So let's see what 2.0 is all about. 2.0 has four enhanced service types, E-Line, E-LAN, E-Tree, E-Access. How do they make a difference? It's about matching business applications with services offered and relevant SLAs. New interconnect and access services allow expanded availability and faster time to service regionally and globally to all end user locations. For service providers, 2.0 provides efficient, lower cost networking without compromising quality. New wholesale access services enables access to millions of new business locations accessed by tier two and three providers. Above all, adopting 2.0 changes the whole cost model for mobile backhaul, where the expense of overbuilding networks to deal with bursting mobile traffic can be a thing of the past. These new markets and growth add up to more revenue opportunities for manufacturers. Hang on, I've already had my E-Line and E-LAN services certified. I didn't say anything about 1.0. Are you saying it's now obsolete? And what about equipment certifications? The market values MEF 9 and MEF 14 certifications and will keep it that way. Existing certifications automatically qualify you for 1.0 certification. 2.0 certification brings differentiation and proper validation of the new functionality and management. Current certifications and the 2.0 will coexist for years to come. New e-access certification will be a passport to new business relationships for hundreds of service providers. So, Gen 2, is that where it ends? Far from it. Carrier Ethernet's future generations will enable simplified, automated service delivery. Setting up and dynamically changing a Carrier Ethernet service should become as easy as making a phone call. We've come a long way, but this really is just the beginning. There's so much more to tell you. To find out more, download these simple fact sheets from the MEF website. <laughs>